let's uh, go ahead and review some stuff. So let's start by reviewing prime factorization. So for any positive integer n, you can factor by attempting to divide by all the primes. And you can do this recursively, um, and you only have to check up the square root of the event. So let me start with a difficult one, which is more difficult than, it, than oh, yes, lights off again. Yep. So listen, let's start with uh, this example, one, one, two, four, zero. And I put this on there because I realized that there was a typo on your practice quiz. Um, this number is too hard. This is a harder number to factor than any of them I'm going to give you on the actual quiz. Um, but let's do it anyway, uh, just to show you that it is doable. Uh, so what does this equal to? Well, the first thing you might notice is that, well, you have a zero layer. And so that means you can just break this into 10 times uh, one, one, two, four. And this is equal to two times five, since so that's equal to 10. And you'll notice that this is also even. And so let's divide that by two. So two times 562. So if you collect some of the twos, that's two squared times five. And this one you can break into is even again, so we can break that up. So two times 281. And so this is equal to two cubed times five times 281. But now, now the question is, how do we factor 281? Um, if you don't have your primes table memorized up to 300, which I certainly don't, well, then you have to check, right? So how far do you have to check? Well, the first thing is you only need to check up the square root of n. So, well, what's two squared? That's equal to four. Three squared is equal to nine. Five squared is equal to 25. Seven squared is equal to uh, 49. 11 squared is equal to 121. 13 squared is equal to 169. And 17 squared is equal to 289. And so you don't need to check anything after 17 or because that's bigger than your number. Okay, so you only need to check these and see if it's um, divisible by any of these. Well, is this even? Um, well, is the last digit uh, an even number? No, it's not. So you know it's not even. Um, the other thing you can do is you can ask for detracting divisible by three, you can add the digits together and see if that's divisible by three. So if you try, try that, you'll find that that is 11, which is not divisible by three. So it's uh, this is not divisible by three. Is it divisible by five? Well, no, because it doesn't end in zero or five. Is it divisible by seven? Well, that's a little bit harder, but uh, you can explicitly check this by just uh, going, well, uh, 281 divided by seven is equal to 40 remainder one. So no, it's not divisible by seven. Uh, and then you check 11. So uh, I'm actually gonna write that out. 281 divided by 11. Well, that's two, 22, uh, 61, five, 55, six, remainder six. It's not divisible by 11. Uh, and uh, well, is it divisible by 13? 281, 13, 226, 21, uh, one, 13, eight, remainder eight. It's not divisible by last. I have a question. On the quiz, am I allowed to just unroot the integer into radical form and then factorize from there? I do not understand that question, unfortunately. So if you could repeat that in a slightly different way, um, I will try to answer it. Yeah, sorry, I don't quite understand what you mean. But yeah, so in this case, we know that uh, it's not divisible by any of these. So that means 281 is prime. So the prime factorization is two cubed times five times 281. I will go ahead and tell you that when I wrote this number down, I actually meant to write 12,240, not 11,240, because um, I did not intend to have a prime this big. And there will not be any primes this big on your quiz, um, uh, just to make things easier for you. So um, I will just go ahead and say, you won't need to know any primes bigger than 30 for, um, I mean, 30 isn't a prime, but uh, you won't need any primes bigger than that for the purposes of the quiz. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and tell you that. Um, and uh, the actual one that we wanted to do uh, is the prime factorization of 12,240. So I'm gonna ask you guys to do this one since this is the one I meant to make you do on the practice quiz. Um, I, I've updated the practice quiz. So if you haven't looked at the practice quiz yet, it'll be 12,240. Um, on the original version of the practice quiz, I had the uh, typo. So how do you factor this? Well, uh, you might, you check two first and then you check three and then you check five. In this particular case, you know it's divisible by 10, and so that might help as well.
oh, did I zero out the chat yet? I don't think I did. Let me zero it out. So if you already replied, uh, please reply again. Okay, so we're getting some people who are answering A. So let's write this out. So 12 to 40, that's equal to 10 times 12, 24. Um, so that's equal to two times five times, well, let's, let's divide that by two. That's two times six, 12. That's equal to two times five times two times, uh, let's divide that by three next, three times 102, uh, which is equal to two times five times two, uh, Wait, I did that wrong. I was divided by six there. Oops. So let me make sure I get this right. So let me actually do it rather than just trying to read off my notes. Two times three times 102. Uh, so that should get you uh, two cubed times three times five times two times 51. Wait, that's wrong. Wait, no, is that right? Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. So that's equal to do two to the fourth times three times five times two times three times 17. That's equal to, I am doing something really, really wrong here. So uh, what did I do wrong? By six divide by two. What are you dividing by each time? Let me start this from scratch. So this is just to point out that I also make mistakes like this. Uh, so I'm trying to do it from scratch instead of just reading off my notes. So let's divide by 10 to start off since that makes life a little bit easier. So we're dividing by 10 to start off. So that's 10 times, so uh, one, uh, 10 times 1,224. Let's divide by uh, two. So first I'm going to break this 10 into, into two times five. And I'm going to break the 1,224 into two times 612, okay? And so if I collect that together, that's uh, equal to two squared times five times 612. And then I'm going to break apart the 612 again. So I break apart the 612 again, that's going to be two squared times five times, uh, let's say two times 306. So that's what we broke up 612 into. We collect together the twos again, so that's two cubed times five times uh, 306, but we can break apart 306 and divide that by say three times three times 102. And uh, well, let's uh, break that apart again. So let's break apart that bit again. So this is equal to two cubed times three times five times, uh, let's break that into three times 34. You break that up again. So this is equal to two cubed times three squared times five times two times 17. Collect that together, that's two to the fourth times three squared times five times 17. And some of you guys were much faster than I was. So that is the factorization of that. Um, there will be a couple numbers you need to factor. You can see how many, exactly how many I expect you to do on a quiz. And you'll notice that I don't have any really big primes in there. And I don't intend to give you super big primes. Okay. So let's see, uh, any questions about that? Okay, let's move on. For greatest common divisors, there are two different ways that you guys have learned to do it. You will probably need to know, well, you need to know at least one of the ways, and you will also need to know prime factorization, but you will need to know the Euclidean algorithm for combinations later. So uh, let's say, what is the greatest common divisor of 100 and 1,224? Oh, yeah, there. What is the greatest common divisor of these two numbers? So remember, you have two different ways of doing it. And notice that you already did the prime factorization of uh, one of them. Oh, sorry, let me zero out the chat. You already did the prime factorization for one of the two numbers. So maybe that's one, one easy way of doing it. So uh, just a reminder, 12,240 is equal to two to the four times three squared times five times 17. Okay, and uh, you notice the 100 is equal to 10 squared, which is equal to two times five squared, which is equal to two squared times five squared. So one way of getting the greatest common divisor is just to take the smallest of all of the powers. 
the greatest common divisor of 112,240 is equal, well, what's the smallest power of two? Well, it's two, right? What's the smallest power of three? Zero. What's the smallest power of five? One. What's the smallest power of 17? Um, well, zero. So you end up getting uh, 20. And let's do it the other way as well, uh, just because that's useful. So 12,240 is equal to divided by 100, 100 times 122 plus 40. Uh, and 100 is equal to 40 times 2 plus 20. And 40 is equal to 20 times 2. And so therefore, the, the greatest common divisor is equal to 20 again. OK, so now that we've done that, uh, we can also talk a little bit about advanced combinations. So this was the ungraded problems from last week, which hopefully you guys looked at, and which you might go through a little bit more in um, your tutorials this week. But so notice that given any two integers, you can solve the combination for that's equal to the greatest common divisor, but just reversing your Euclidean algorithm. You did that on quiz one. But also, you can solve for any multiple of the greatest common divisor, but just multiplying everything uh, by C. Oh, actually, I should have let's like C times C times. Yeah. And then you, you can also solve separately for all combinations that are equal to zero by dividing by all the common factors of M and N and considering all multiples of X equal to M and Y equal to minus N. Because that will solve. Um, why is that? Because if you plug that in, zero is equal to M times. Oh, I did that wrong here. That should be M is equal to. Um, n and then minus n. So apologies for that. I got them backwards. So zero is equal to m times n minus n times m. And lastly, you can add zero to any solution to get the uh, to get different combinations. And we'll go through this. Uh, and I apologize for that typo there. Uh, so let's try it out. Come on, why am I not? Okay, so let's try it out. Is there an integer combination of 112,240 that is equal to 50? Yes or no? And just as a reminder, what is the greatest common divisor of 112,240? That's equal to 20, right? So the question is, is 50 a multiple of 20? And the answer is no. OK. What about 60? OK, yeah. So this is yes, because it's a multiple of GCD. OK, and uh, can you find three different solutions of it? Uh, let's go ahead and ask this as a yes, no question. Well, uh, the answer is, should be pretty obvious. And the answer to that is yes. And I will be asking you to find multiple solutions on your assignment and on your um, homework. Oh, sorry, on the assignment and on the quiz. So how do we do that? Well, first you need to find one solution, right? Once you found one solution, then you can maybe modify it to get your other solutions. So let's find one solution by using the reverse Euclidean algorithm. I'm sorry, let me make sure I'm going to... Yeah, I should have time for everything. I want to make sure I get through all, all, all of the review. So uh, we use the reverse Euclidean algorithm. So what was the Euclidean algorithm? Let me rewrite what I did a little bit ago. So this is a, an easier reverse Euclidean algorithm. I chose this because this was easy so that we could go through it. But of course, like you did on the quiz, you might have to do more steps than this. You reverse it, uh, and then what do you get? You get 20 is equal to 100 minus 40 times two, and that's from there. Uh, and then you, you can plug in the other one. So then you get 20 is equal to 100 minus, well, sub, what's 40 equal to? That's 12,240 minus 100 times 122 times two. Expand that out, combine together the terms, and you get 20 is equal to 100 uh, times one plus 122 times two minus 1, 12,240 times two. And so 20 is equal to 100 
times uh, 245 minus 12,240 times two. And notice you guys get calculators. And so when you do this, I strongly encourage you to check your answer by plugging this right-hand side back in with your calculator and seeing if it's actually equal to 20. Because if you did it right, it should equal 20. And if you did it wrong, well, then it won't equal 20. Well, probably not, unless you did like a weird combination of mistakes that cancel each other out. And lastly, how do we get, this is just the greatest common divisor. We want to multiple this, right? So we multiply everything by three. So you multiply everything by three, you get 60 is equal to 100 times 735 minus 12,240 times six, right? So you just multiply everything by three and that's still a valid equation. And that gives you one solution. Okay, so that's one of the solutions. Uh, what about, uh, I want more than one solution. Though. So what do we do? Uh, so sorry, um, so we have that uh, answer. So what about more than one solution? Well, let's start by considering, consider zero is equal to 100 X plus 12,240, Y. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by the greatest common divisor, divide by GCD. So that gives you, uh, that's, that's 20. So that gives you zero is equal to five X um, plus 612Y. Oh, wait, that's, uh, what do I do that right? Yeah, okay, five X plus 612Y. Okay, and so that implies that one solution is X is equal to 612 and Y is equal to minus five. Which then implies that zero is equal to 100 times 612 minus 12,240 times five. Okay, so hopefully you follow all that logic. And again, when you get to these steps, what you can do is you can check by just plugging that into your calculator. Is that equal to zero? If it's not equal to zero, you made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so now we have something that's equal to zero. And remember, we also had something that was equal to 60. So remember, we also had 60 is equal to 100 times 735 minus 12,240 times six, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we have these two equations. Well, I mean, you can always add zero to something, right? So if you add zero to something, you're gonna get the same thing. So if we add these two together, you're just adding zero to it. And so you're gonna get the same thing. And so then you get 60 is equal to 100 times when you add those two together, it's 1347 minus 12,240 times 11. So that gives you solution two. Does that make sense to everyone? So we had something that we knew was equal to zero. If something's equal to zero, you can always add it in. And so I added in a zero on one side and the other thing that was equal to zero on the other side. Please put an exclamation point in chat or raise your hands if you understood. And if you don't do that, I'm gonna assume you did not understand. Okay. Great, yeah. Okay, so that gives you a second solution. So uh, how do we uh, get a um, third solution? Does anyone have any suggestions? So how did we get the second solution? We added zero, right? What would happen if you added zero again? So the third solution would be, yeah, so you can add zero another time. Now this was the second solution because we had our first solution here. That was our first solution. Uh, 460 is equal to something. So another thing you could do is you could, uh, what did you mean by add zero? Ah, okay, so let me write this out a little bit uh, more. So let me change my color. So notice that we have this equation here. So 60 is equal to 100 times 735 minus 1,240 times six, right? So I claim that this is equal to this plus zero. Okay, well, that seems easy enough, right? 
you just added zero. But notice, what is zero equal to? Zero is equal to lat. And so that's why you can substitute that in for zero, which gives you this equation. And that's all we did there. So we added zero to our solution. But we added zero written in a weird way. So remember how I was saying earlier that sometimes there are different ways of writing the same number? I can write one as one, or I can write one as two minus one, or I can write one as two divided by two, and that's all the same thing. Zero, you can also write in a bunch of different ways. And the nice thing about zero is when you add it to something, it doesn't change it. So you could do it again. In fact, well, that's one way of getting a third solution is to add another copy of zero. I'm actually going to show you a slightly different way, which is you could subtract zero. Subtracting zero also works. So, I'll, uh, oh, sorry, I keep on zooming in weirdly because I'm touching it wrong. So you can do things like 60 is equal to 100 times 735 minus 12 to 4, 0 times 6. And I can subtract 0. So 0 is equal to 100 times 6, 12 minus 12 to 4, 0 times 5. And if I subtract 0, sorry, subtract 0, then you get 60 is equal to 100 times 123 minus 12,240 times 1. That gives you a third solution. How did we go from zero to 60? Well, note that we solved this equation. So we solved this equation to go uh, to get uh, what zero is equal to as a combination. So note, you can always make a combination out uh, to, let, to get zero. That's always true. Well, another way of thinking about it is, uh, and so this gives us a, a particular combination and you can add that combination to your other combination to get more uh, answers. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. If it did not, please ask your TAs um, because this is important for you to know because I will be asking you to make multiple different ways of doing a combination. And this, is, this, this method will actually give you every single possible combination if you repeatedly add zero or subtract zero. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, another topic we talked about, I think this was Monday or maybe it was last Wednesday, I don't remember anymore, is counting divisors. So to do this, you can take all the exponents in the prime factorization of n, add one to each of them, and take the product. So for example, 12,240 is equal to 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 17. So the answer to the number of um, divisors is going to be 4 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to 5 times 3 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 60. Why does this work? It's because divisors are everything with smaller exponents, with smaller exponents. So for example, things like two cubes times three times five, or two to the times 17, or two to the four times three times five times 17, et cetera. And if you look at all the different ways of doing that, you have five different choices for the exponent on two, Three different choices for the exponent on three, two different choices for the exponent on five, and two different choices for the exponent on 17, because you can also choose zero. So let me ask you guys to do that for number of divisors of 100. How many divisors does 100 have? Okay, yeah, so it looks like people are starting to respond. Um, so what's 100 equal to? 100 is equal to uh, 10 squared, right? What is equal to 2 times 5 squared? Is equal to 2 squared times 5 squared. Well, we have a 2 and a 2, so that's 2 plus 1 times 2 plus 1, which is equal to 9. So now, now that we've done that, how do we count common divisors? Well, one way of finding common divisors is just to find the divisor of the greatest common divisor. The number of divisors of the greatest common divisor because that's the biggest one. And so all the other divisors have to divide into it. So let's ask how many numbers are divisors of both 100 and 12,240? Uh, 12, so just as a reminder, the greatest common divisor of 100 and 12,240 is equal to 20, which we already did earlier.
Okay, so it looks like uh, people are, let's uh, write this out. So 20 is equal to two squared times five when you do the factorization. And so that gives you, oh, wait, did I do that wrong? Two squared times five. So the answer is equal to two plus one times one plus one, which is equal to three times two. Oh, no, that's six, great. Okay. So a lot is how you count common divisors is you just need to look at the greatest common divisor and then count the number of divisors of that. Any questions about that before we go on? Okay, great. So now this is one of the, one of the last things we uh, learned and we didn't really have that much time to work on this. Um, so we also uh, introduced relative primes in the last lecture and Euler's Todian's function or there's phi function. And there are several different ways we gave of doing this. One way is you just, uh, what this does is this counts relative primes. And one way to solve that is you could use a modified sieve of Eratosthenes to remove all the numbers that aren't relative primes, right? So if something has the um, prime factorization of uh, two, uh, squared times three times seven or whatever, then you remove all the things that are multiples of two, and then you remove all the things that are multiple of three, and you remove all the things that are all multiples of five. So this is a little bit slow though, because then you have to go through and cross them out one by one like we did earlier, but there's another way of doing it, which is you notice that each time you remove multiples of a prime, you're removing one over P of the numbers, right? And so if a prime factorization is N is equal to uh, all these different exponents, where uh, each of these exponents are greater than zero, then you have this sort of ugly formula, but you do have a formula to solve it. Um, this formula is uglier than it looks. It, it actually makes a lot of sense because for example, uh, I think I did this example last time, phi of 120 is equal to, well, you start with 120 and then you remove half of one. Uh, oh, because this is equal to two cubed times three times five. So you remove half of them. So that's multiplying by one minus one half. And then you remove a third of them for all the ones that are multiples of three. And then you remove a fifth of them for all the ones that are multiples of five. So when you remove half of them, well, you're left with 60, right? And then you remove a third of them, you're left with 40. And then when you remove another one fifth of them, you let's a 40 minus eight, which is equal to 32. Does anyone have any questions on that? So another way you could have done that is you could have listed all numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, all the way up to 119, and just start crossing them out, et cetera. But that would take a while. Um, so basically, this is a quicker way of doing this without actually having to, having to go through and cross them. Okay, now I'm going to have you guys try it out because I don't trust that you guys went and tried these out after class on Monday. So let's zero, zero my chat. What is phi of 1,000? I'll give you a moment to uh, figure this one out since uh, I think we're doing all right on time. Since I think, yeah, this is my last slide. And hopefully this will be a little bit of a review of all types of problems that I sort of expect you to do on your homework and on the quiz next week. Um, of course, you should also uh, ask your TAs to go over these or go over other stuff in the class that you may be a bit confused about. Okay, so uh, we have some guesses for B and for C. Um, let me ask a question. Can you have more relative primes than the size of your number? So five, five 1,000 can't, you're only looking at how many relative primes it has that are less than it. And so it can't ever be bigger than the number itself. Uh, but it could either be 100 or 400, and so we need to actually solve this to figure it out. Oh, sorry, I keep on zooming in. So this is equal, so what's 1,000 equal to? Well, 1,000 is equal to 10 cubed, which is equal to 2 cubed times 5 cubed. So this is equal to 1,000 times, well, you remove half of them for the uh, 2, and you remove another third of them for the 3. So that's going to be equal to 500, uh, and then you remove, oh, sorry, uh, move a fifth of them, not a third of them. 500 times one minus one fifth, which is then equal to 400. Yep. 
And let's uh, finish off by doing an, another big number. Oh, uh, no, there. So what about 3,993? 3, so how many uh, relative primes does this have? Okay, so we're getting a mix of a couple of different answers. Uh, well, I'll give you guys a little bit more time to figure it out. Okay, so we're getting a lot of people who are answering C. Well, let's start by doing the prime factorization. So what is, Three nine nine three. So the first thing I notice, at least, is that this looks like it's divisible by three. So that's equal to three times one thousand three hundred thirty-one. Now, some of you may recall Pascal's triangle, and you may recognize that this is a multiple of eleven. If you don't recognize that, then you would have to check uh, two, three, five, seven, eleven, and you'd realize that this is a multiple of eleven. And so you divide this by eleven. That's three times eleven times. 121, and the 121 is also a multiple of 11. So that's equal to three times 11 cubed, actually. Okay, so now that we have the prime factorization, now you just need to plug it back into the formula, right? Oh, uh, no, no, uh, I'm not actually sure what the no's are for. Sorry, I didn't see that earlier. So um, sometimes I don't see your chat immediately. So if you write a little bit more than just an answer, that's helpful for me. But so this is equal to, 3,993. And what's the first thing you do? We're going to remove a third of the them because the first prime is a three. So remove a third of them. And then you remove an 11th of them. But what's this equal to? When you remove a third of them, that's the same as multiplied by two thirds. And so it's going to be 2,662 times one minus one over 11. So that's equal to 2,662 minus 242 which is equal to 2,420. So the answer here is actually B. One of the things that you have to be a little bit careful about is you're removing a third of one or you're removing a fifth of one. You're not multiplying by a third, you're removing a third. Um, okay, does anyone have any questions about this? So basically we're doing the, the sieve, but we're doing it quickly by just multiplying things through. Um, like we were talking about, one of the things mathematicians have been trying to figure out is faster ways of counting stuff. So mathematicians don't want to spend their entire day going through a giant list of numbers and counting them one by one, though that is something many mathematicians have done throughout history. Um, but that's not something people want to do all the time. And so people want to figure out faster ways of doing things. Ah, so you don't remove 11 three times. No, no, no. Because um, if you think about removing, you're removing all things that are multiples of 11. So yes, you could remove the multiples of 11 three times. But if you want to remove it the second time, you've already removed all of them. So you're not removing any more of them when you remove 11 more times. So you, you need to really think about what it is you're removing. You're removing all the multiples of 11. And that's why you're, like, you're multiplying by that. The multiplication, you, and you don't do it twice because uh, you, you can only remove the multiples of 11 once. Uh, can I see the last page again? Uh, the last page will also be on the, um, uh, I will also have this page on the, uh, on the notes, of course, on the post lecture notes. Okay, so having said that, uh, thank you all so much. I will end the class here. I do have office hours. I will be walking over to my office in IC343 if you guys have any more questions. Um, and otherwise, good luck on your assignment on Friday. And then I will see you all on Monday.